Hey everyone, Rich the Third here, and this is Let's Play Pokemon Black Part 30. We're gonna go ahead and clear out the rest of Driftvale City today. And they'll be all not getting into the cold storage just yet. Mostly because I need to go through and actually record the audio I want to use for that. Decide just what yet. Oh, we still have to fight the Heartbreaker. That's another thing I'm gonna have to audio swap for. Yeah, it's all sorts of fun to be had here. Editing wise, that is. Let's go ahead and save, because I haven't done that since before the last episode or something. It's probably an exaggeration, but still. They are going up to 7 hours already, I guess. Anyway. Can't do a whole lot up this way yet. Gym's closed off. So we caught Team Plasma. Just gotta go through some slidey ice puzzles to get there. Uh, there's a guy in Route 6 that tells you how to get to Cabalion, which you need to do to get to the R2 legendaries of the trio. I'll bet enough he's the hardest of the three to reach because he's in a dark cave. Several levels in a dark cave. It's a real pain to get to him, but it's pathetically easy to faint. Although I'm going to try to catch him. No matter what. I'm pretty sure you need to have both of them caught before you can even challenge the third one, which is incidentally the best of the three, sweeper wise. A lot of good rock and ground type moves, and also has beastly special attack. It's decent speed to back it up. Okay, so for showing him a Pokemon level 30 or higher, he gives us an expert belt. It's a very useful item. It's basically, well, it says. Like, uh, yes, it boosts super effective moves, but only by 10%. If I were to use Mystic Water, it boosts the power of water by 15%. So, it's always a tactical decision to use that over, say, something that increases the effectiveness of X typing. In fact, I would have been, been better off just using Mystic Water for all of the 5th gem as opposed to Expert Belt. But, I guess it works. Obviously the best application for that would be if you had multiple super effective moves you need to utilize. Yeah, that's the herb store. Don't recommend using that because it lowers your Pokemon's happiness among other things. They're also really expensive and I'm pretty sure at this point in the game you can buy revives. Let's go see what was behind the counter, shall we? A big pearl. That's something that becomes useful later on because we meet an NPC that will buy those off of us for a high price. Now we're going to head across the bridge to the cold storage area, but we're not going into the cold storage just yet. Now well, for now we're going to get some battles done here. Uh, yeah, sorry for the short episode today guys. Um, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I must have recorded 15 minutes and ended up cutting off a lot of stuff. Or maybe I was just saving that for later, which probably was the case now that I think of it. Let's start that on a new recording. That didn't do much. Kill fire! Blast and Herb Bud type. 
Punch in your butt. Eh. Oh uh, yeah. Just one of those boring episodes where you don't do a whole lot gameplay wise. Just random trainer battles. Joltek. Quick, squash it like a bug. Berries anyway. So it doesn't affect us. It's honestly a waste of a held item slot. Unless it's early on in the game, in which case that kind of thing could potentially be useful, but I still prefer that as something that raises the power of moves or otherwise increases defense. Seems like something situationally useful like leftovers or even rocky helmet. How'd that not kill it? I don't know, but we're gonna use power jump now. That should do the trick. That should do the truck. Double. Balls. Grand double. Time for war type. Worst bug type ever dies to water because it's ground. This. Yep. Now they'll probably kill itself. No, it didn't. And we just hit level 35 with that. A while before we reach level 36 and our next evolution, though. So, yeah, not in this episode. <laughs> okay, so if you come down here between these two buildings, there's a guy that gives you the aforementioned Rocky helmet. <laughs> Situationally useful, although it's better off if you're having a tank hold it rather than a sweeper. I can actually tank the damage and then dish it back out in the form of the Rocky Helmet. So, definitely situational. <laughs> Might be good in the pinch depending on what you're doing. It's also worth noting that when it comes to the recoil damage, it doesn't actually go by type at all. So, that's an unconditional, you know, 10% damage, for instance. The only thing that even makes it worth using, in my opinion, is that the damage is unconditional and not, for instance, say, rock. Which would be just a pain. I mean, I tried semi with Rocky Helmet, but it just doesn't work as well as if you put it on a tank. It's kind of like right about that. So that's not a very good sweeper item. Tanks and sweepers, tanks and sweepers. Let's sit here and watch this Joker try to kill us. We'll succeed. Here swipes. Again. I'm kind of wondering how that does so much damage each time. This was to be like 2 or 3 a hit, but for us it does like 5. Yeah, see, the reason I didn't use the um, Firestone yet for him is because later on he learns a very good move that ordinarily would cost you about $70,000 for TM. Yeah, it's Pokey Dollars, but screw that. Timber, and why not? We'll call it a Psychic type. Sure, why not? Like trying to overpower it with water, so. 
custom camp the entire scene, the water pulse animation. Alright, so he's done. Just hide him there in the grass. This is a protein. Let's make him back out of here. <coughs> a little more around the metal. It's going to be near the end of the recording here. So, yeah. Next time on Let's Play, we're going to start with the cold storage. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye.